Thank you so much, Rowan, for that presentation. Um, I'd like now to swiftly move on to our final presentation, um, and thank you for staying with us. Um, I would like to discuss policy and regulation um, in regards to successful deployment for FTTH, and like to announce, um, invite to the stage the participants from the FTTH councils around the world. I'd like to invite to the stage um, Mr. Watura Katsushima from the FTTH Council Asia Pacific, um, Heather Burnett Gold, President and CEO of the Fibre Broadband Association, Winnie to Clark, Chief Executive of FTTH Council Africa, and Christine Belluni from Director General of FTTH Council MENA. I'd also like to invite to the stage. Um, Minister Chowdhury, Director General of the FTTH Council Asia Pacific. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Camilla. Um, we're, we're at the closing panel right now, and uh, um, I'd like to welcome my colleagues again from uh, rest of the, the FTTH councils. Uh, we'll, um, we'll start off with uh, Ms. Uh, Heather Gold, who's going to uh, first share with us um, an initiative that we have among all the councils uh, under the banner of FCG, FTTH Council Global Alliance. And uh, FTTH Council Global Alliance has the chairperson which rotates every year. Uh, the current year chair position is uh, held by uh, the Private Broadband Association. So if Heather would go ahead, um, thank you. Can you guys hear me? Or good afternoon. Good <laughs> now you know that I still have jet lag. <laughs> Sorry. Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the FCGA, which is the consortium for all fiber across the uh, globe. It consists of five sister organizations, um, the Fiber Broadband Association, which is the new name for uh, the North America group, Fiber to the Home Council EU, Fiber to the Home Council Asia Pacific, our host, uh, the Fiber to the Home Council Middle East and North Africa, uh, the FTTH Council uh, Africa, which is primarily Sub-Sahara Africa, and then the LATAM chapter of North America, which is the Fiber Broadband LATAM chapter. Basically, we were formed by a memorandum of understanding in Munich in 2012. We came together to promote best practices and global awareness of the economic benefits and development of fi all fiber. Am I okay? Um, we decided to meet each year to, ex to ex ex exchange ideas about how to promote all fiber deployment, how to develop um, stances on what best practices are, and just as a group to work to continue to promote fiber deployment. So over the course of the years, we have published a definition of terms and conditions, which we have is on all of our websites, which has become the standard for different for how you define different things in the fiber of the home community. Um, it is um, a living document. We do update it as new things come about. And so, if you have any any concerns out of what it means to have fiber of the home or fiber of the building, or different aspects of fiber deployment, go to our terms and conditions, which as I said, you'll find on each one of our websites. Uh, starting this year in September, we just, uh, in February, sorry, uh, we decided to undertake uh, a major project each year. And this year we are doing a white paper on 5G. And as the chairman, it is my uh, responsibility to have my group lead that effort and then the other councils uh, will collaborate and bring us their information. As you saw yesterday, Asia PAC is way ahead of the rest of us because they already finished a white paper on 5G. Um, in North America, we expect to have our section of it done in October, and we hope to present that at a regional conference in Detroit. And it will be supported by the information from the other five councils. So each year we will try to undertake a topic of interest around the world so that we can provide more value and information to our many members. Does anyone have any questions about the FCGA? We are all independent. You cannot get a group discount by joining one and not the others. 
Um, we all have our own shows. We all have our own board of directors. Um, who's somebody laughing when I said that about you can't get a group district? We've had a lot of people it, 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 ask. It's us over here who are laughing. <laughs> because we all know we're asked. So I'm just laying it out there. No, if you belong to Asia Pac and want to join Americas, you must pay separately. Okay. <laughs> First of all, the, uh, just in lighter way. With, uh, with them. Okay. Uh, I didn't get a full sense of FCGA. Is it merely a research study organization or uh, a standards body or what exactly it is? It is a collaboration so that with common interests and so we exchange information about regulatory trends. Okay. We. Um, the common definitions. Um, Only the FT uh, access domain or all any kind of fiber, long distance, uh, submarine? No, it's primarily access. Primarily access. Okay. Yes. So how much fiber is there in the, if I can ask you, the total at macro level, all the countries put together? Ooh, do we know the answer to that? You've got the gentleman right there. Oh, okay. You'll be talking subsequently? <laughs> Do we, okay, okay. Do, we know how many, okay. do we know how many millions of homes are passed throughout the world? Okay. And how much would have become old if for replacement and all those blah, blah. If you can do a study on those lines, uh, that how much uh, has been already used, uh, invested, and productive, unproductive fiber experiences. Okay, uh, that would be uh, something this that evolution, I don't know of what use it will be. But uh, if we for at least history, eh? for so our that would children, be of interest our children once upon a time there was five or some new nanotechnology may come, so like that. <laughs> so we each individually know how much fiber is deployed in our region, but you're saying it would be helpful if we consolidated that each year. Okay, that's a, a good question. Thank you. I'll take notes, somebody will tell me. Okay, so here, here, um, as I said, here are some of the activities. Um, Gimme Fiber Day, sharing of technical information, development of common approaches to, to, new, to new technologies. And as I said, our 2017 project will be a white paper on 5G and its reliance and dependence on fiber. <coughs> so let me talk a little bit about what's going on in North America. We now pass nearly 42 million homes. Um, that's an 18% growth year over year. So you can see that we say, as we say, fiber is on fire uh, in North America. 16.6 uh, .6 million homes are connected. We find that in rural areas, the degree of penetration is higher than in suburban and urban areas. We, in rural areas that deploy all fiber, we have take rates of up to 60 to 70%. Obviously, in a suburban or urban area where you have competing technologies, the take rates are usually around 48%. So what are the most important challenges to fiber deployment in the Americas? Number one, funding. Number two is regulation, and I'll talk a little bit about Number three that. are technical uh, requirements. That would be anything from, um, you know, how do you deploy quicker, faster? What are some of the new technical deployment techniques? Um, and then marketing, just getting the word out there that you're deploying and what some of the benefits are. So policies and regulations, which is the focus of our discussion today, what is leading to success? Actually, this is one area where the new administration, I can heartily endorse them. Um, Chairman Pai is very investment friendly. Um, I am sad to say that under the last administration, um, we faced a lot of challenges that would deter investment, um, but he is aggressively looking to expand infrastructure deployment, and he is clawing back prior rulings that seek to regulate pricing on high-capacity services. You asked about local access versus other. Many of our members are using um, high-capacity middle-mile services to help fund the it's been a relatively unregulated market, and they're using the income from that to help to offset some of the expense in local. Um, we're com he's commencing a proceeding in an advisory committee to establish best practices for infrastructure investment. <coughs> and that's important because when he's talking about best practices, he's looking at local and state 
situations. And some of the biggest impediments are now under local control. And I'm talking about things like access to polls, ducts, and conduit. I very much enjoyed hearing your Secretary of Telecommunications yesterday talk about his efforts to put in a common uh, duct system under the roads in India. That remains a big challenge in the United States. Um, access to rights away, how quickly and effectively and reasonably can you have access to where you need to put your fiber, again, under local control, and there are rules that are just run the gamut, and some are not pro-investment fr friendly. And then access to buildings, that's a big thing in, this co in our country as the MDU growth is expanding, because often the building owner decides to do a sweetheart deal with one provider, and they don't let other providers in the building, even if residents of the building want a different provider. So those are some of the issues on our plate this year. And then last but not least, here's about our conference, which will be held June 12th through 14th um, in Florida, in Orlando. Um, last year we had 1,600 people in Nashville. We have an oversold exhibit hall, and we hope to see you all there. Any questions about the Americas before I turn it over to my peer? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Um.